a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Padre Pio Padre Pio, also known as Saint Pio of Pietrelcina, OFM Cap, was a friar, priest, stigmatist, and mystic, now venerated as a saint of the Catholic Church. Born Francesco Forgioni. He was given the name of Pius when he joined the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin. Padre Pio became famous for exhibiting stigmata for most of his life, thereby generating much interest and controversy. He was both beatified and canonized by Pope John Paul II. The Sanctuary of St. Pio of Pietrelcina is located in San Giovanni Rotondo, province of Foggia, Italy. Early Life Francesco Forgioni was born to Grazio Mario Forgioni and Maria Giuseppe di Nunzio on May 25, 1887, in Pietrelcina, a town in the southern Italian region of Campania. His parents were peasant farmers. He was baptized in the nearby Santa Anna Chapel, which stands upon the walls of a castle. He later served as an altar server in this same chapel. He had an older brother, Michel, and three younger sisters, Felicita. Pellegrina, and Grazia. His parents had two other children who died in infancy. When he was baptized, he was given the name Francesco. He stated that by the time he was five years old, he had already made the decision to dedicate his entire life to God. He worked on the land up to the age of ten, looking after the small flock of sheep the family owned. Pietrelcina was a town where feast days of saints were celebrated throughout the year and the Forgioni family was deeply religious. They attended Mass daily, prayed the Rosary nightly, and abstained from meat three days a week in honor of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Although Francesco's parents and grandparents were illiterate, they narrated Bible stories to their children. His mother said that Francesco was able to see and speak with Jesus, the Virgin Mary, and his guardian angel, and that as a child he assumed that all people could do so. According to the diary of Father Agostino de San Marco, who was his spiritual director in San Marco in Lamis, the young Francesco Forgioni was afflicted with a number of illnesses. At six he suffered from severe gastroenteritis. At ten he caught typhoid fever. As a youth, Francesco reported that he had experienced heavenly visions and ecstasies. In 1897, after he had completed three years at the public school, Francesco was said to have been drawn to the life of a friar after listening to a young Capuchin friar who was in the countryside seeking donations. When Francesco expressed his desire to his parents, they made a trip to Morcone, a community 13 miles north of Pietrelcina, to find out if their son was eligible to enter the Capuchin order. The friars there informed them that they were interested in accepting Francesco into their community, but he needed to be better educated. Francesco's father went to the United States in search of work to pay for private tutoring for his son, to meet the academic requirements to enter the Capuchin order. It was in this period that Francesco received the Sacrament of Confirmation on September 27, 1899. He underwent private tutoring and passed the stipulated academic requirements on January 6, 1903, at the age of 15. He entered the novitiate of the Capuchin friars at Morcone. On January 22, he took the Franciscan habit in the name of Francis Pio, in honor of Pope St. Pius I, whose relic is preserved in the Santa Anna Chapel in Pietrelcina. He took the simple vows of poverty, chastity and obedience. Priesthood Commencing his seven-year study for the priesthood, Francis Pio traveled to the friary of St. Francis of Assisi by Oxcart. At 17, he suddenly fell ill, complaining of loss of appetite, insomnia, exhaustion, fainting spells, and terrible migraines. He vomited frequently and could digest only milk and cheese. Religious devotees and hagiographers point to this time, when he was suffering physical illness. That inexplicable phenomena allegedly began to occur. During prayers, Pio appeared to others to be in a stupor, as if he were absent. One of Pio's fellow friars later claimed to have seen him in ecstasy, levitating above the ground. 
In June 1905, Francis Pios' health worsened to such an extent that his superiors decided to send him to a mountain convent, in the hope that the change of air would do him some good. This had little impact, however, and doctors advised that he return to his hometown, even though his health failed to improve. Despite this, on January 27, 1907, he still made his solemn profession. In 1910, Pio was subsequently ordained a priest by Archbishop Paolo Skinosi at the Cathedral of Benevento. Four days later, he offered his first Mass at the parish church of Our Lady of the Angels, his health being precarious. He was permitted to remain with his family until 1916 while still retaining the Capuchin habit. On September 4, 1916, however, Pio was ordered to return to his community life. He moved to an agricultural community. Our Lady of Grace Capuchin Friary, located in the Gargana Mountains in San Giovanni Rotondo in the province of Folgeur. At that time the community numbered in total seven friars. He went on to remain at San Giovanni Rotondo until his death in 1968, except for a period of military service. Padre Pio celebrated the Mass in Latin, as was the widespread custom of the time, in the priesthood. Padre Pio was known to perform successful conversions which included Freemasons. Military Service When World War I started, four friars from this community were selected for military service. At that time, Padre Pio was a teacher at the seminary and a spiritual director. When one more friar was called into service, Padre Pio was put in charge of the community. On November 15, 1915, he was drafted into the Italian army and on December 6, assigned to the 10th Medical Corps in Naples. Due to poor health, he was continually discharged and recalled until on March 16, 1918, he was declared unfit for military service and discharged. In all, his military service lasted 182 days. Stigmata on September 20, 1918, while hearing confessions, Padre Pio had his first occurrence of the stigmata, bodily marks, pain, and bleeding in locations corresponding to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus Christ. This phenomenon continued for 50 years, until the end of his life. The blood flowing from the stigmata purportedly smelled of perfume or flowers, a phenomenon mentioned in stories of the lives of several saints and often referred to as the odor of sanctity. Though Padre Pio said he would have preferred to suffer in secret, by early 1919, news about the stigmatic friar began to spread in the secular world. Padre Pio's wounds are said to have been examined by many people, including physicians. People who had started rebuilding their lives after World War I, began to see in Padre Pio a symbol of hope. Those close to him attest that he began to manifest several spiritual gifts, including the gifts of healing, bilocation, levitation, prophecy, miracles, extraordinary abstinence from both sleep and nourishment, the ability to read hearts, the gift of tongues, the gift of conversions, and pleasant-smelling wounds. His stigmata, regarded as evidence of holiness, were studied by physicians whose independence from the church is not known. The observations were unexplainable and the wounds never became infected. His wounds healed once, but reappeared. They were examined by Luigi Ramonelli, chief physician of the city hospital of Barletta, for about one year. Dr. Giorgio Festa, a private practitioner, also examined them in 1920 and 1925. Professor Giuseppe Bastianelli, physician to Pope Benedict XV, agreed that the wounds existed, but made no other comment. Pathologist Dr. Ramico Bignami of the University of Rome also observed the wounds, but could make no diagnosis. Both Bignami and Dr. Giuseppe Sala commented on the unusually smooth edges of the wounds and lack of edema. Dr. Alberto Caserta took X-rays of Padre Pio's hands in 1954 and found no abnormality in the bone structure. He was said to act embarrassed by this condition and most photographs show him wearing red mittens or black coverings on his hands and feet where the bleeding occurred. 
at the time of Padre Pio's death. His body appeared unwounded, with no sign of scarring. There was a report that doctors who examined his body found it empty of all blood. There were both religious and non-religious critics who accused Padre Pio of faking his stigmata, saying he used carbolic acid to make the wounds. In 2007, The Telegraph reported on the book, The Other Christ, Padre Pio and 19th Century Italy, by the historian Sergio Luzato. He recounted that in 1919, according to one document in the Vatican's archive, Maria de Vito, the cousin of a local pharmacist at Folgeur, testified that the young Padre Pio bought four grams of carbolic acid in 1919. The Catholic Anti-Defamation League said Luzato was spreading anti-Catholic libels and needed to learn more about religion. The church dismissed charges that he had faked the stigmata. The boys had needed injections to fight the Spanish flu which was raging at that time. Due to a shortage of doctors, Padres Paulino and Pio administered the shots, using carbolic acid as a sterilizing agent. Transverberation and Visible Stigmata Based on Padre Pio's correspondence, even early in his priesthood he experienced less obvious indications of the visible stigmata for which he would later become famous. In a 1911 letter, Padre Pio wrote to his spiritual advisor Padre Benedetto from San Marco in Lamis, describing something he had been experiencing for a year, then last night something happened which I can neither explain nor understand. In the middle of the palms of my hands a red mark appeared about the size of a penny, accompanied by acute pain in the middle of the red marks. The pain was more pronounced in the middle of the left hand. So much so that I can still feel it. Also under my feet I can feel some pain. His close friend Padre Agostino wrote to him in 1915, asking specific questions, such as when he first experienced visions, whether he had been granted the stigmata, and whether he felt the pains of the Passion of Christ namely the crowning of thorns and the scourging. Padre Pio replied that he had been favored with visions since his novitiate period. He wrote that although he had been granted the stigmata, he had been so terrified by the phenomenon he begged the Lord to withdraw them. He wrote that he did not wish the pain to be removed, only the visible wounds, since at the time he purportedly considered them to be an indescribable and almost unbearable humiliation. The visible wounds disappeared at that point, but reappeared in September 1918. He reported, however, that the pain remained and was more acute on specific days and under certain circumstances. He also said that he was suffering the pain of the crown of thorns and the scourging. He did not define the frequency of these occurrences, but said that he had been suffering from them at least once sweetly for some years. These events are alleged to have caused his health to fail for which reason he was permitted to stay at home. To maintain his religious life as a friar while away from the community, he celebrated the Holy Mass daily and taught at school. Saint John of the Cross describes the phenomenon of transverberation as follows, the soul being inflamed with the love of God which is interiorly attacked by a seraph, who pierces it through with a fiery dart. This leaves the soul wounded, which causes it to suffer from the overflowing of divine love. World War I continued and in July 1918, Pope Benedict XV, who had termed the World War, the suicide of Europe, appealed to all Christians urging them to pray for an end to the World War. On July 27 of the same year, Padre Pio offered himself as a victim for the end of the war. Days passed and between August 5 and 7, Padre Pio had a vision in which Christ appeared and pierced his side. As a result, Padre Pio had a physical wound in his side. This occurrence is considered as a transverberation or piercing of the heart, indicating the union of love with God. As a side note, a first-class relic of Padre Pio, which consists of a large framed square of linen bearing a blood stain from the wound of the transverberation of the heart in his side, is exposed for public veneration at the street. John Cantius Church in Chicago. Many books published about St. Pio included a small prayer card with a cloth third class relic. 
The occasion of transverberation coincided with a seven-week-long period of spiritual unrest for Padre Pio. One of his Capuchin brothers said this of his state during that period. During this time his entire appearance looked altered as if he had died. He was constantly weeping and sighing, saying that God had forsaken him. In a letter from Padre Pio to Padre Benedetto, dated 21 August 1918, Padre Pio writes of his experiences during the transverberation, while I was hearing the boys' confessions on the evening of the 5th. August, I was suddenly terrorized by the sight of a celestial person who presented himself to my mind's eye. He had in his hand a sort of weapon like a very long sharp pointed steel blade which seemed to emit fire. At the very instant that I saw all this, I saw that person hurl the weapon into my soul with all his might. I cried out with difficulty and felt I was dying. I asked the boy to leave, because I felt ill and no longer had the strength to continue. This agony lasted uninterruptedly until the morning of the 7th. I cannot tell you how much I suffered during this period of anguish. Even my entrails were torn and ruptured by the weapon, and nothing was spared. From that day on I have been mortally wounded. I feel in the depths of my soul a wound that is always open and which causes me continual agony. On September 20, 1918, Accounts state that the pains of the transverberation had ceased and Padre Pio was in profound peace. On that day, as Padre Pio was engaged in prayer in the choir loft in the Church of Our Lady of Grace, the same being who had appeared to him and given him the transverberation, and who is believed to be the wounded Christ, appeared again, and Padre Pio had another experience of religious ecstasy. When the ecstasy ended, Padre Pio had received the visible stigmata, the five wounds of Christ. This time, the stigmata were permanent. They stayed visible for the next fifty years of his life. In a letter to Padre Benedetto, his superior and spiritual advisor from San Marco in Lamis, dated October 22, 1918, Padre Pio describes his experience of receiving the stigmata on the morning of the 20th of last month, in the choir. After I had celebrated Mass I yielded to a drowsiness similar to a sweet sleep. I saw before me a mysterious person similar to the one I had seen on the evening of the 5th of August. The only difference was that his hands and feet and side were dripping blood. This sight terrified me and what I felt at that moment is indescribable. I thought I should have died if the Lord had not intervened and strengthened my heart which was about to burst out of my chest. The vision disappeared and I became aware that my hands, feet and side were dripping blood. Imagine the agony I experienced and continue to experience almost every day. The heart wound bleeds continually, especially from Thursday evening until Saturday. Dear Father, I am dying of pain because of the wounds and the resulting embarrassment I feel deep in my soul. I am afraid I shall bleed to death if the Lord does not hear my heartfelt supplication to relieve me of this condition. Will Jesus, who is so good, grant me this grace? Will he at least free me from the embarrassment caused by these outward signs? I will raise my voice and will not stop imploring him until in his mercy he takes away, not the wound or the pain, which is impossible since I wish to be inebriated with pain, but these outward signs which cause me such embarrassment and unbearable humiliation. The pain was so intense that I began to feel as if I were dying on the cross. Poor health. In addition to his childhood illnesses, throughout his life Padre Pio suffered from asthmatic bronchitis. He also had a large kidney stone, with frequent abdominal pains. He suffered from a chronic gastritis, which later turned into an ulcer. He also suffered from inflammations of the eye nose, ear, and throat, and eventually formed rhinitis and chronic otitis. In 1925, Padre Pio was operated on for an inguinal hernia, and shortly after this a large cyst formed on his neck that was surgically removed. Another surgery was required to remove a malignant tumor on his ear. After this operation Padre Pio was subjected to radiological treatment.
which was successful, it seems, after only two treatments. In 1956, he came down with a serious case of exudative pleuritis. The diagnosis was certified by Cataldo Cassano, a professor who personally extracted the serous liquid from the body of Padre Pio. He remained bedridden for four consecutive months. In his old age Padre Pio was tormented by painful arthritis. Controversies Because of the unusual abilities Padre Pio was said to possess, the Holy See instituted investigations of the related accounts. The local bishop, Pasquale Gagliardi, did not believe Padre Pio's alleged miracles, suggesting that his Capuchin brothers were making a display out of the monk to gain financial advantage. When Pius XI became Pope in 1922, the Vatican became extremely doubtful. Padre Pio was subject to numerous investigations. The Vatican imposed severe sanctions on Padre Pio to reduce publicity about him. It forbade him from saying Mass in public, blessing people, answering letters, showing his stigmata publicly, and communicating with Padre Benedetto, his spiritual director. Padre Pio was to be relocated to another convent in northern Italy. The local people threatened to riot, and the Vatican left Padre Pio where he was. Fearing these local riots, the Vatican dropped a plan to transfer Padre Pio to another friary, and a second plan for removal was also changed. From 1921 to 1922 he was prevented from publicly performing his priestly duties, such as hearing confessions and saying Mass. From 1924 to 1931, the Holy See made statements denying that the events in Padre Pio's life were due to any divine cause. The founder of Milan's Catholic University of the Sacred Heart, friar, physician, and psychologist Agostino Gemelli, met Padre Pio once, for a few minutes, and was unable to examine his stigmata. According to Gemelli, Padre Pio was an ignorant and self-mutilating psychopath who exploited people's credulity. Gemelli speculated that Padre Pio kept his wounds open with carbolic acid. As a result, Padre Pio was required to wrap the wounds in cloth. For many years, he wore fingerless gloves that concealed his wounds. According to believers, the bleeding continued for some 50 years until the wounds closed within hours of his death. According to the historian Sergio Luzato, a document found in the Vatican's archive reveals the testimony of a cousin of a pharmacist who said that the young Padre Pio bought four grams of carbolic acid in 1919. The Archbishop of Manfredonia, Pasquale Gagliardi, reported this as evidence that Padre Pio could have affected the stigmata with acid. This suggestion was examined and dismissed by the Vatican. By 1933, the tide began to turn with Pope Pius XI ordering the Holy See to reverse its ban on Padre Pio's public celebration of Mass. The Pope said, I have not been badly disposed toward Padre Pio, but I have been badly informed. In 1934, the friar was again allowed to hear confessions. He was also given honorary permission to preach despite never having taken the exam for the preaching license. Pope Pius XII, who assumed the papacy in 1939, encouraged devotees to visit Padre Pio. In 1940, Padre Pio began plans to open a hospital in San Giovanni Rotondo, to be named the Casa Sollievo della Sofferenza or, home to relieve suffering. The hospital opened in 1956. Barbara Ward, a British humanitarian and journalist on assignment in Italy, played a major role in obtaining for this project a grant of $325,000 from the United Nations Relief and Rehabilitation Administration. In order that Padre Pio might directly supervise this project, Pope Pius XII in 1957 granted him dispensation from his vow of poverty. Padre Pio's detractors used this project as another weapon to attack him, charging him with misappropriation of funds. Pope Paul VI, in the mid-1960s dismissed all accusations against Padre Pio. In 1947, 
Father Karol Józef Wojtler, a young Polish priest who was studying in Rome at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas, Angelicum, visited Padre Pio, who heard his confession. Austrian Cardinal Alphonse Stickler reported that Wojtler confided to him that during this meeting, Padre Pio told him he would one day ascend to the highest post in the church though further confirmation is needed. Cardinal Stickler said that Wojtler believed that the prophecy was fulfilled when he became a cardinal. According to oral tradition, Bishop Wojtler wrote to Padre Pio in 1962 to ask him to pray for Dr. Wanda Poltorska, a friend in Poland who was suffering from cancer. Later, Dr. Poltorska's cancer was found to be in spontaneous remission. Medical professionals were unable to offer an explanation for the phenomenon. Pope John Paul II started the canonization process of Padre Pio and canonized him in 2002. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries. Would you like to know more?